Who was paid the first $4 million in respect of the multi-million dollar payments to Saudi Arabian Order. interests? Order. I'm going to ask the member to start the question again. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Who was paid the first $4 million in respect of the multi-million dollar payments to Saudi Arabian interests referred to in the Cabinet paper of 13 February 2013 he tabled yesterday? And how was the value calculated and split between quotes intellectual property which the Saudi investor brings to the platform, the services and in-market networks he will contribute, and the settlement of the long-running dispute? The Honourable Speaker. Murray McCulley. <coughs> Speaker, $4 million was paid to Hamoud Al Ali Al Khalaf Trading and Transportation under a contract for services between MFAT and Hamoud Al Ali Al Khalaf Trading and Transportation. The value was identified in negotiations between the parties. This was a process overseen by senior Ministry of Foreign Affairs officials, and the final agreement was signed out by the Secretary of Foreign Affairs with the support of myself as Foreign Minister and that of the Cabinet. Point of order, the Honourable David Parker. Uh, my question asked for the split between those different cost centres. Order, order. Uh, the question very clearly did. If the Minister could address that part of the question as to the split of the $4 million. Mr um, Speaker, the matters uh, that were considered by the officials who conducted the negotiations are referred to very fully in the Cabinet paper that I tabled in the House yesterday. They relate to all of the costs associated with shifting the operations previously based in New Zealand to a new hub in Saudi Arabia. They included the intellectual property of the Al Khalaf Group and uh, access to their uh, physical location in Saudi Arabia uh, and, as I say, many other items that are enumerated in the Cabinet paper I tabled in the House yesterday. Mr Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable David. Uh, I did ask for the split and I still haven't received it. I agree with that and we've now tried on two occasions to get it. The way forward now is further supplementaries and I invite the member to ask further supplementary questions. The Honourable Speaker. Order. If this businessman needed New Zealand to pay many of millions of dollars for the model farm using New Zealand technology and New Zealand sheep, what intellectual property justified this multi-million dollar payment? Mr Speaker, Honourable Murray McCulley. as the paper that I tabled yesterday makes clear, the New Zealand government specifically resisted the concept of compensation uh, to the Al Khalaf group. But no doubt they would have had in their minds the fact that the actions of the previous government had exposed the New Zealand government to legal claims estimated to be up to $30 million. The honourable member may wish to ask himself whether he, as a member of that former government, carries some responsibility for that sorry state of affairs. Uh, point of order, Mr Speaker. Order. 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 This is a point of order. And it will be all, heard. all very interesting, sir, but my question was... Order. Can I invite the member to re-ask that question? Thank you, Mr Speaker. If this businessman needed New Zealanders to pay for the model farm using New Zealand technology and New Zealand sheep, what intellectual property justified this multi-million dollar payment? Honourable Murray McCulley. Speaker, I'm, uh, as I indicated in my primary answer, the agreement that was struck between officials and the Al Khalaf group included all of the intellectual property associated with shifting the Awasi, the, the Awasi sheep breeding operation from New Zealand to a new location in Saudi Arabia. Also, also in the minds of officials would have been the fact that the uh, Al Khalaf group had taken legal advice and could mount a legal claim against the government for an amount estimated to be up to $30 million. It is a bit rich for members of the former government who exposed New Zealand to the risk of a $30 million claim to berate members of this government for resolving the issue for one third of that amount. Order. Supplementary question. Order. Order. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Given that his government renewed the customs export prohibition order on animals for slaughter in 2010, 
and that it is perfectly legal for New Zealand to have a policy banning live sheep exports, how can he justify paying millions of dollars to settle a hollow legal threat? Order, the honourable. Order, honourable. Mr. Speaker, I agree that the customs export prohibition order was renewed by the current government. What was different was that we did not mislead the Saudi investors about the consequences of the rollover of that order. We fronted up and told them the truth when the previous government had misled them actively over many years and exposed the New Zealand taxpayer to a claim of up to $30 million. Uh, supplementary. Supplementary. Order. Order. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Wasn't the real reason the first $4 million was paid, in fact, to pay off people whose influence in Saudi Arabia was getting in the way of the Gulf Free Trade Agreement? Honourable Murray McCulley. I've made it very clear that um, one of the consequences, sadly, from this whole saga was that the relationship between New Zealand and Saudi Arabia was poisoned and that poisoned relationship spilled over into the wider Gulf Cooperation Council. But I've also made it clear that if the officials negotiating this matter had to consider the fact that there was a looming claim for up to $30 million resulting from the actions of a government of which the Honourable Mr Parker was a member. Supplementary. Order. Order. Supplementary question. The Honourable David Parker. Can the Minister point to any other example where the New Zealand Government has ever paid millions of dollars to an overseas businessman in order to advance a free trade agreement? Yeah. Yeah. Honourable Mr. Murray McCulley. Mr Speaker, I, I cannot point to any such example because they don't think New Zealand has had a government as stupid and dishonest as the government that Mr Parker was a member of. Supplementary question, the Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, Minister, is this not a fact that this is a new low in our international relationships and that this is a multi-million dollar bribe that has been given to private interests in Saudi Arabia? Is that not a fact? The Honourable Murray McCulley. Mr Speaker, I've made it clear that um, the officials who were dealing with this matter would have had on their minds the damage that had been done to New Zealand's trading relationship with Saudi Arabia and the wider Gulf, as well as having on their minds the exposure of the New Zealand government to a substantial claim for damages resulting from the actions of a government of which the right honourable member was a member. Tree. Order. Supplementary question, James Shaw. What legal advice did the government receive as to the likely success of the potential claim by Mr Al Khalaf? Speaker. The Honourable Murray McCulley. Mr Speaker. Order! Mr Speaker, invite the Minister as I've made clear, the government did not wish to proceed down that path and entered into talks with the parties and entered into talks with the parties to try and avoid such an outcome. And I am satisfied that we would never have done so had we not been advised that the claim had some prospect of success. The member, may, the member may wish to look at the Cabinet paper and see that there's a redaction there which uh, is a reference that would have been disadvantageous to the interest of New Zealand taxpayers. Supplementary. Supplementary. Is this further supplementary from Mr Gray? Then I'll take a supplementary from the Honourable David uh, Why is he the first minister in history to back a multi-million dollar facilitation payment which in other jurisdictions is called a bribe? Honourable Murray McCulley. Mr Speaker, uh, unfortunately the current government inherited a serious problem in 2008 and it was clear to... Order! 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 A question's been asked. The Minister's got now a right and a responsibility to answer it. It's clear to the government, Mr Speaker, that the relationship with the Saudi Arabian government was poisoned, that the relationship with the Gulf states had been poisoned and that the New Zealand government was also exposed to a legal claim for up to $30 million. Now, one solution was for us to go on misleading people as the previous government had done, but we decided it was time to front up 
and try and resolve that situation. Speaker. Order. 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 Supplementary question, James Shaw. Yeah, thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, to the Minister, how can the public be assured of the credibility of the tender process when it was overseen by MFAT, which had already decided to compensate Mr Al Khalaf and is also responsible for negotiating the trade deal that was being blocked by Mr Al Khalaf? Speaker, I've already, told the House, Murray McCulley. I've already told the House yesterday that the tender, award, tender process was overseen by MFAT officials, New Zealand trade and enterprise officials, and an independent uh, expert uh, who was also a previous chief executive of Landcorp. I'm satisfied both as to the capabilities and the integrity of all of the individuals involved.